Hello everyone, this is Scribbling Joe, and I have some interesting news because I found you, so you can probably see it right here. This is the Brushable by uh, Kuritaki, and the Brushable is uh, a two-sided brush. I altered this one, so it's basically on this is the out of the box version I have altered this one but out of the box I got this one just recently and this is Kuritake Zig Brushables and they have archival quality ink Open this thing up. So, if you like your brush nibs very much and you want two colors but you want a softer brush like these right here they have pretty hard brushes like they will tear paper up if you're not careful um, the advantage is that you could turn them on their side and use them as a brush but you can also press and then press harder to get a thicker line as well um, so right here um, I can have a different color which can be a lighter color which is a lot different from the other one which is the advantage that I have here so basically it's a two-sided brush pen and the brush however as you can see maybe yeah as you can see the brush nib is quite small and some people prefer a larger brush nib like this one and you want to cover a lot of ground. These right here, if you see right here, it says it's acid free, archival quality, pigmented ink. Um, pigmented ink, that it means that it uses an actual element for its pigment rather than using a dye, which a lot of other pens, they use a dye, which causes them to fade in sunlight. Um, <clears throat> these, however, use they use pigment which means that they use something like a uh, lamp black which is the, the the same stuff the soot that you get when you burn the side of a lamp basically or it could use even uh, carbon from from charcoal um, but either way it uses some kind of element which won't fade over time so this right here can give you a nice thin line like so or it could give you a nice thick line like so uh, but you get options and it gives you a lot of ground that you can cover if you have to a large space that you're trying to cover in black which I end up with a lot most more often than not but um one thing that I want in some of these is it I want the ability the only thing I don't like is a gray I don't like their gray it's for me that is too dark to be gray if you have them side by side you can see the difference let me see if I can zoom this in so you can see barely but yeah you can see the difference but it's it's really dark I prefer something more a little bit lighter like I altered this one here so this one has like a lighter gray for now anyway so <laughs> But um, this one has a lighter gray because I altered this one. And I will show you exactly how I altered some of these. This one right here has a smaller nib right there for like if you want to do fine line work. So like maybe you want to draw your character. And then 
after you had done all your drawings. Let's draw a little little person here. Don't have to make it look too good, just just filling in the area. So yeah, let's say you have a little character here that you made and going too far into this okay but yeah you get the idea okay so let's say you got a little character here all right and you want to go and you got some areas that you want to fill in with black you can do that with this right here so I drew and I drew the same pen the, my thing is that a lot of times I'm trying to uh, consolidate all the things that I have in my pockets because you know I draw a lot on the go a lot of times I am moving around and um, I'm not really stationary when I draw now, there are some people that just sit at a table and draw, and that's fine. But um, I move around a lot. So having something like this that I can just have one pen rather than a bunch of pens is much easier. And that's really where I, what I'm trying to do is just kind of make it so that I only have one thing rather than a bunch of things but yeah you get the idea maybe I, I just wanna black out a whole area here like so maybe going for like some film noirish kinda of vibe But yeah, you get the idea. So, it's kind of it's it's something that I try to do is just kind of minimize all the things that I am carrying. And that's really what my goal is here. So, this right here can carry quite a bit of ink. The only thing is that, like, this is the one little thing that got me right here, is that it uses a kind of a felt core. If you open up the inside, like that, you can see it has this felt core inside, which isn't bad by itself. It's just that the felt core makes it harder to refill so if I run out of ink with this and it also occupies more space than having ink so that means that you get less ink because the, most of the volume is taken up by the felt part but I mean it's workable I can let's see this is black right here I personally like a little more versatility with my ink. I like to be able to uh, change the colors if I want.
you can always add ink to it to kind of make it a little bit more uh, of a juicier pen if you feel so inclined. That's a bit too juicy though. I can see the ink getting ready to drip right out. There we go. That's better. And just pop this right back on. And to push it back on, you put the cap on there. And you just push with the cap. Like that with your thumb. And it should snap right. Well, oh, I didn't do that. There you go. It's just snap right back on there. And you should be able to use a pen just fine. Also, I don't find that their blacks are as rich as the other one. The other one has really, really dark blacks. If I put that one next to the other one, uh, actually, they're probably about the same. Mm, might be the paper. Huh. Okay, but either way, you can make this. And the way I made it was um, I left one side. Originally, the pen comes like this with two brush sides, which, if you want, you may keep. You know, that's up to you. But, um, and the other side comes with a black brush pen. So you can actually just take the cap off of this, remove the nib using your pliers, just twist and pull and it should pop right out just like that and remove the core sometimes if it doesn't slide right out you might have to tap it against something in order to nudge it free keep these together so that you can go ahead and you're gonna need one of these right here this is the Zig Rider <clears throat> now the Zig Rider has a thick side which is a bullet nib right here and this is not a brush it's actually a bullet nib which is good for some people if you prefer that kind of drawing style that can work as well it also has a capability of going thin to thick and um, you can if you a lot of people that prefer a more stable cartoony style if you don't if you have trouble with a brush nib and you want something that's still capable of going thin to thick like that a bullet a bullet nib might be more your area Kurataki makes these as well it's a zig rider I have used one for many years and they have served me very well um, but yeah you can I leave that side alone this side however which is a fine side is the side that I am interested in I can grab this twist and pull pops right out tap the end to remove the core this one's being a little stubborn there we go keep the core next to it on this end you can put the gray core into there and the tip the nib just gently put it on there take the cap put the cap on there and just push it in with your thumb and it should snap right in no problem so now you got a bullet nib here and a brush end if you want you can use that if you want to I'm probably not going to use it but um and on this end you have the fine nib and the brush nib on either side oh but don't forget to put your core back on there I might actually just like put a little bit more ink on this one because it is not as inky as I want it to be
That should be okay. The rest will bleed on through. I don't want to fill it too much because then I'll end up seeping out the other end. And then I'll end up with like a bunch of ink just rushing out. And just gently put that on there. Get the cap on there. Use your thumb to just kind of push the whole thing together. And there you go. You should have one brush end. And the other end should be your fine nib. Now, to make sure that you know which end is which, first of all, keep a good idea of which end is which right now. So, you see that's the fine nib. What I like to do is I have uh, electrical tape and find the end of this. I will take off a piece of electrical tape. Doesn't have to be big. And cut a fine little arrow. Like so. You can remove that piece. It's just a triangle that I cut out. And that triangle is going to be my marker for which end is a fine nib. It's just a thin triangle. And I will put this over this end right here. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect on there. Just good enough so that you can look at it and tell which end is which. That's really all it's about. And then on this end right here, right there, directly opposite, I will cut a fatter triangle. I'm going to have to cut a little bit more of this end off here. There. And this fatter triangle is going to indicate which end is the thick end. Like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just so you know which end is which. You could leave it like that if you want to. But I like to put a piece of tape over it to reinforce the whole thing. Just lay it on there. that And like that. So now, this right here can replace this pen right here. Sort of, kind of, anyway. 
I got myself a thin side or thick side <laughs> and the thin side right here so I can draw with this side and a lot of time you can't really get like the level of thickness that you can with the other one here like I can this one I can do some thin lines and then I can really get some thick lines if I wanted to but you could do some pretty decent stuff with this so you can draw with this end and then you can fill in all your black spaces with this end but you are capable of going thin to thick quite well with this one it's just it's overall really nice kind of nib which this one is also great but when you can't have this one because I saw these they actually do sell them in a Japanese store I found them but they're thirty dollars for shipping to the US so I'm not entirely sure that this pen is worth the thirty dollars that it costs to ship it so <laughs> this is a good alternative these cost a little less than five bucks and they're available on Amazon they ship if you got prime they ship for free and they're pretty easy to, to create if you want to so you can just leave them as they are and use them as they are or you can uh, rig them with the zig riders and the zig riders are about as much really you could buy a whole box of these I bought a whole box of them for like 12 bucks and so I just had a bunch of them just lying around because I really I was really using them a lot for a while but um these right here they're a little more expensive but they're they're not as expensive as others for instance these cost about six dollars right here and these cost about four and some change so these are a good alternative if you're considering doing some kind of cartooning stuff these are really good and you can use just one have one for traveling and just kind of use that as your means of drawing so this has been scribbling joe and i just wanted to share this with you until next time bye